Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Xu Chang Wang. I'm at the University of Central Florida. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about our work, large-scale analysis of IoT data exposure through companion apps. So this is a joint work between uh, Sun University, University of Central Florida, Indiana University, and Purdue University. So people today are increasingly using Internet of Things devices, like IoT devices, uh, in, for different tasks, such as home automation and health monitoring. So those devices, at the same time, also introduce privacy concerns to users. For example, there are some sex toys that are reported to not only provide the functionality that it, they claim to, but also provide, but also collect your everyday activities. And to address this privacy concern, we need to ask two simple yet very important questions. What type of data are being collected by these IoT devices? And also, how is the data collected and to which party is the data shared to? So prior effort, a prior research had did a lot of effort on this direction. Uh, for example, one line of research uh, tried to like, set up the device in the lab environment and run the device, uh, capture device traffic, and identify whether there are some private data in the traffic. And this type of analysis usually um, uh, has some limitations, such as you're, we are not able to analyze all the kind of custom uh, device, de device encryption, data encryption, and also it's a little bit um, expensive, both financially and, uh, and uh, both financially and uh, on human effort, uh, which limited it to scale to the new devices. And one another line of research that may help us to um, may help to scale the analysis to different IoT devices is through cross-sourcing. So basically, we can ask the IoT, de IoT device users to voluntarily contribute, contribute their traffic for analysis. And for this type of analysis, the data collected are still concerning the real data. Therefore, the in-depth and fine-grained analysis on such data will likely cause privacy concern to the user by themselves. So in our study, we want to come up with an approach that allow us to conduct large-scale and fine-grained analysis of the IoT data exposure in the world. So actually, we have two observations on the today's IoT devices that, that makes the analysis possible. The first observation is that many of the IoT devices use short-range communication. And therefore, in order for those devices to uh, communicate with the user and then communicate with the IoT cloud, the data first need to go to the uh, company app. And then the app analyzes the processes and analyzes the traffic, analyzes the data, and then send it to the IoT cloud. The second model is that the, well, the IoT devices have di direct connection to the IoT cloud. A large portion of the IoT data still need to be synchronized from the cloud to the uh, company app in order for the user to access the device and manage the device. And therefore, for almost all the IoT devices in the market, there is a significant amount of IoT data that will be reflected in the mobile company app. And therefore, we can analyze the mobile company app in order to get some information uh, related to the IoT data uh, uh, processed by the IoT device. So the second observation we have is that um, the, IoT, the IoT devices, uh, the IoT company apps actually has a cluster of IoT uh, text labels in the application because it's less likely the application will process one data point at a time, right? So therefore, we were able to, we, we may be able to identify the IoT data, point, IoT data points where locating these clustered text labels. In our study, we come up with such an approach called IoT Profiler. So IoT Profiler will take the um, mobile company apps of the IoT devices as an input, and then it will take the taxonomy of, one, of the IoT sensitive data as input. And after that, we, um, after that, we use a module which is called IoT Data Identifier to analyze the de analyze application so as to locate the IoT code blocks, and also identify the IoT data points. And once we identify those data points, we will be able to perform a lot of analysis 
on the data points by analyzing the code, such as the data flow related to the data points and where the data is sent to, right? So the output of this approach is kind of the uh, IoT devices that collects additional IoT data with privacy risks. So in this uh, talk, due to time constraint, I'm not going to dive deep into the technical details of each module, but I want to show a general uh, notion of what kind of um, information we want to get from, for, from each task, from each module of this uh, approach. So the first module is a taxonomy of privacy sensitive IoT data. So compared to the mobile data that are, can often be fingerprinted with uh, sensitive APIs, the IoT data is kind of diverse because there's a diverse set of IoT devices there. Right? And in our study, we want to analyze a wide spectrum of IoT data, and therefore we created an IoT taxonomy by analyzing all the pieces of IoT-related information, such as IoT reports, and papers, documents, and industry standards. And where this process, we were able to create a taxonomy that contains, as far as we know, the largest number of IoT data points, spanning a number of uh, data categories. And we use this data to this taxonomy to understand the privacy risks of a large number of IoT devices. At the same time, we also make this taxonomy open to the public for future research. So the, the second module is about identifying the IoT data points. And in this part, the major challenge is that the IoT data in the apps are usually mixed with the app's local data. And therefore, this kind of data are often kind of noise to our identification. And in this part, to overcome the challenge, we try to adopt a two-stage classifier. In the first stage, we use a classifier to identify the IoT code block. Therefore, we will only be uh, analyzing the cluster text labels related to the IoT device. And in the second step, we identify the text labels in the code block so as to check whether they are close to the, uh, to the data points in the IoT taxonomy. And after that, we can report the uh, real IoT da data points that are in the IoT code block. So after that, after identifying all those IoT, code, IoT data points, which are essentially uh, data labels in the application, we use a few, uh, a few uh, techniques to like, connect those text labels to the in-program variables so that we can keep track of the variables using the uh, like a data flow analysis. And also, we can analyze the applications like other assets, such as privacy, lab for privacy policies to understand whether the kind of data are disclosed by, by the privacy policy. And using this kind of techniques, we can do a lot of analysis, such as are these data flows disclosed within the privacy policies? Are those data transmitted securely or insecurely to their cloud backends? And again, um, please check out a paper for further technical details. So, Using this approach, we will be able to do a large-scale understanding of the IoT data exposure. And in this, in this study, we gathered a large number of applications from the official App Store, like over 6,000 applications. And we conduct a large-scale study on this app set. So basically, for each app, we analyzed all the data points that were mentioned in the IoT taxonomy, and then we check whether the uh, application are involved in some privacy, uh, privacy uh, uh, risks. For example, we check whether the application expose IoT data without disclosure. We also check whether the IoT data points are transmitted to the backend uh, insecurely. And after that, we check whether the IoT data are sharing, uh, the IoT data are shared to the third party without disclosing to the user. And our approach actually helped to identify over 90% identify IoT data over 90% of applications. And based on those, all those kind of uh, IoT data points identified, we found that almost one third of the IoT, IoT applications share their data to the cloud services without disclosing to the user. And each app discloses uh, about 5.6 5 IoT data atoms on average. 
And in addition to the understanding uh, of the landscape, we were also able to do a lot of analysis using our tool. So for, for example, we can do that, we can understand the LT data exposure for users for different regions by analyzing the application in different regions. We will also be able to analyze the cross-region LT data flow because cross-region data flow is kind of sensitive due to the different privacy policies enforced, enforced in different regions. And uh, again, uh, there's a lot of findings that was, that, that was enabled by our approach. If you are interested, please feel free to check out our paper. So here's, a few, uh, here's a one example showing you what kind of LT devices are collecting data and what, a, what is the impact. So the device is called a kind of a smart bracelet. And we found that this smart bracelet collect users' health data and send it to, the, to their own private server. At the same time, we found that it is also share part of the data to a network of insurance companies. This is a clear indication that there is a potential violation of the, um, of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, there, there is a potential privacy violation in the LT device because they, they are sharing users' data to a network without disclosing to the user. And to summarize, so in our study, we presented a new technology to enable fine-grained analysis of LT data exposure. And also, with this approach, we did a large-scale understanding of LT data exposure in the world. So this approach actually have applications in some important domains. For example, we can automatically generate the privacy labels for the application, especially when the, first, when the developer does not have information about what kind of data are collected by the like, libraries they are using. Right? And, and, and in addition to this study, I also want to uh, take this opportunity to introduce myself like I recently uh, joined the cybersecurity and privacy cluster at the University of Central Florida. And uh, our team is working on some research on the supply chain security, privacy compliance automation, mobile and IoT security. If you are interested in these directions, please scan the barcode, visit our, our, our website, and check our recent updates. And finally, I want to thank everyone for listening, and I'm happy to take, to take any questions.